welcome to our February ARC. It's lovely to see you. I'm sure you know us all. I'm Heather, that's Steve, that's Simon. You know us really well. And um, you know the ARC Children's Service, what we normally do, we'll have some songs, we'll have some games, we'll have a story from Rhiannon, and of course, we'll have the puppets, the bit that you all love. But as we always start, we'll start by singing happy birthday. Now, whose birthday has it been? Well, it's been Phoenix's birthday. We need to sing to Mahala and Bethia, I believe. And also our daughter, Simon's sister, Emma, and our beautiful granddaughter and niece, Grace. So let's sing to all of those. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Phoenix, Mahala, Bethia, Emma, little darling Grace, and anyone else whose birthday it was. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! Now we're going to start with my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. And my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The It's Rhiannon and I've come to share a story for the art this month. But I've got a question for you first. Have you ever been fishing? Well, if you did, if you have been, how many fish did you catch? Now I've got to be honest, I've never been fishing with a fishing rod, but I have been rock pooling with a net when I've been at the beach. I don't think I don't, don't remember catching fish, but I remember finding a couple of crabs and some other little, little critters, but not really any fish. And did you know the best time to go fishing is at night? Because apparently the fish are closer to the surface, so they're easier to catch. And you might be wondering, why am I talking about fishing? Well, in Jesus' time, there were lots of fishermen. Lots of people were fishing as their job and they would catch the fish and then they would sell them to earn money. Well, one day didn't go quite as planned for some fishermen. So let me read you the story today, which is called Jesus and the Fishermen. On the Sea of Galilee, near Capernaum, four fishermen fished all night without catching a single thing. They gave up and they rowed ashore. The names of the fishermen were Simon, who was later named Peter, Andrew, James and John. On the shore, the fishermen cleaned their nets and as they worked, a large crowd of people was growing near them. They were, they were pressing in on Jesus. Now Jesus noticed the men cleaning their nets and he walked towards them and their boats. Jesus asked Peter to take him in the boat and row a short distance from land. Then Jesus spoke to the people and he taught them about God and his kingdom. Now, even though Peter was really tired, he listened very carefully to what Jesus was saying. When Jesus had finished speaking to the crowds, he told Peter to go back fishing. Well, Peter was tired, so he grumbled, Well, Master, we worked hard all night and we've caught nothing. But Peter... He, he had respect for Jesus, 
So Peter rowed out his boat again. When he was out in the boat, him and the fishermen caught a huge number of fish. So many fish that the net began to break. So they called for the other fishermen nearby to come and help. And even with one more, one more the boat, there were so many fish that the boats began to sink. Peter was shocked. Jesus had shown Peter miracles. Jesus had even healed Peter's mother-in-law of a bad fever. Well, this miracle, it made such an impression on Peter that Peter left his boat and he went to speak to Jesus. And Peter told Jesus, Lord, I have done many bad things. Now, Peter and the fishermen, they were amazed with Jesus' power and how special he was. Peter recognised there was something very special about Jesus. And Jesus said to Peter, don't be afraid, because from now on, you will be catching men. Well, Peter told many people that he believed in Jesus as his Lord and the one who had saved him. And because of this, many people believed in Jesus and were saved to live forever in heaven. Well, Jesus, he said to the four fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James and John, will you follow me? Well, they had no idea where Jesus was going, but they followed him. When the men followed Jesus, they left many things behind. James and John left their father, the servants, and all the fish. The fish were not as important as the great adventure they were going to take with Jesus, the Son of God. Now, even though they'd been fishing all night, they hadn't caught, caught a single fish. They were tired, they were disappointed. But even though it felt like this, Peter did just as Jesus asked. He listened to what Jesus was saying when he was out in the boat. And he even went fishing again, even though it was the last thing he wanted to do. And he did it because Jesus told him to do it. Peter knew Jesus was special, so he did what he was told. Now I'm sure Peter was really glad that he listened to Jesus because when he put the nets out, they were super full, so heavy, they were starting to rip and they needed help to bring the nets in. Peter didn't think he deserved to be near Jesus because Jesus was so important. But Jesus told Peter that it was going to be okay and that he was going to catch men instead of fish. Well, I wonder how he's going to do that. Do you think Peter's going to use his fishing net and throw it over people as they walk along the streets? Well, that would be something funny to see. But what Jesus meant by this was that Peter was going to tell people about Jesus that Jesus is God's son and that he'd come to save his people. And that then, if they believed this, they would live in heaven forever. And Jesus asked Peter, Andrew, James and John to leave their fishing nets and their boats behind and to follow him. And they did. They left everything behind, even family, so that they could follow Jesus. They didn't know where Jesus was going, but they knew that they wanted to and should follow him. Now, Jesus calls us to follow him too. He invites us to get to know him as the one who has come to save us. The one who loves us so much that he died on the cross for all the bad things that we've done so that we can be friends with God again. 
and he rose from the dead again. So we can know that he is God. And if we believe all these things, then we will live forever in heaven with God. Do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to live the way that God wants you to? Then we need help to do that. So let's pray and let's ask God to help us if that's what we want to do. Don't forget a big Amen at the end. Dear God, Thank you that Jesus loves us so much that he would die on the cross to save us. Thank you that he didn't stay dead and is now in heaven with you. Please help us to follow Jesus, to do the right things that Jesus wants us to do. Please help us to learn all about the things that Jesus did so that we can tell other people about Jesus. And when we mess up, when we make the wrong choices, we thank you that you forgive us when we say sorry, all because Jesus died for us, that we can be friends with you again. Thank you that you love us, that you want us to follow Jesus, and that you want to help us to do that. Amen! Right, God's people aren't super brave superheroes. Hopefully you'll remember the actions for this. We'll go straight into it. God's people aren't super brave superheroes. They don't have muscles on their heads to their toes. They're not gladiators. It's easy to see. In fact, it's amazing. They're just like you and me. Sometimes scared. Shaking and shivering, Woo. but just realise with God on your side, He can do absolutely anything. God's people aren't super brave superheroes. They don't have muscles on their head to their toes. They're not gladiators. It's easy to see. In fact, it's amazing. They're just like you and me. Well, in our story today, we heard that the fisherman caught lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of fish. I thought we could play a game called Guess the Fish. Now, what we're going to do is the picture is going to start close up to the fish is going to pull out so you see more and more of the fish and I want you as soon as you know what kind of fish or sea creature it is I want you to shout it out really really loudly are you ready for our first one okay let's uh, there'll be some famous fish there'll be some very unusual fish and maybe some sea creatures and fish that you've never ever heard of or seen before. Let's start with one that I think a lot of you might know. Do you know what it is or who it is? Of course, it's Nemo. Good guessing. Now number two. That's right, a stingray. Okay, number three. Snip, snip. It's a crab, of course. Number four. Did you count the legs? Of course, it's an octopus. Number five. Do you recognise this one? Of course, it's Flounder from The Little Mermaid. And actually, Flounder is a guppy. Unusual. Okay, number six. Do 
not such an attractive fish this one it's an angler fish and it lives right at the bottom of the sea number seven what if i was to say meow that's right a catfish how strange is that number eight Oh, this one's slightly prettier, isn't it? Much prettier than the anglerfish. It's an angelfish. How beautiful is that? Number nine. Oh, I love these graceful sea creatures. It's, of course, a seahorse. Number ten. I'm sure you recognised Dory from, from Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. And Dory's actually a royal blue tang. That's her proper name. Thank you, Rhiannon. That was a fantastic game, wasn't it? I'm sure you did very well. And if you want to have a go at five more, just wait to the end of the arc and there'll be a few more to do. Now... In Rhiannon's story, there were lots of fish, weren't there? But also at the end, do you remember the disciples met with Jesus and thought he was so amazing they wanted to tell everyone about him and they left everything and followed him. So we're going to watch a little video now about people passing hearts on. And it's like the disciples did. They told people about Jesus and passed on his love. So here's our little version. See who you can spot in it of people passing on love. song to the ark it's not a new song so you might already know it but i don't believe we've done it at the ark before so let's go over it quickly in case you don't know it it goes like this and i'm changing the words a little bit as well god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be a bit tricky that isn't it god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be be then it goes we can love others and normally we all join hands like this i can't do it with Stephen simon because they're but oh, i can yeah but in a minute they'll be playing but at home you can all join hands together like this we can love others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be and then again we can love others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be and then i'm going to add a verse we can tell others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be we can tell others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be. And then we go back to the beginning. Let's have a go. You're going to get your hands all in a twizzle and a twist now. Ready? God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. We can love others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be. We can love others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be. We can tell others like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be. We can tell others 
like sisters and brothers and that's the way it should be. God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. So we're nearly at the end of our ARC service, but there's plenty more you can do. Joe and Martin will have put on some craft above or below that you can have a go at. We'll put on some extra songs and a suggestion of a game that you can also play at home. Don't forget Rhiannon's extra bit of her game at the end. And of course, it wouldn't be the ARC if we didn't finish with the puppets. So we'll see you again on March the 27th. Enjoy the puppets. Follow him. follow him ever since he touched my life I knew I'd serve oh, my Lord oh, eternally oh, and go anywhere that he leads he is my destiny. destiny I love him I love him I love him and where he leads I'll follow I'll follow I'll follow he'll always be my savior my savior my savior Till forever, forever, forever I will follow him, follow him Follow him wherever he may be There isn't an ocean too deep A mountain so high can keep Keep me away Away from God's love I love him Okay, on to number 11. Oh, watch out for those teeth. Of course, it's a shark. Number 12. Oh, this one's got lots of ink. It squirts out of its body. It's a squid. Number 13. Well, this is a big, big sea creature. Of course, it's a whale. We're almost at the end now. Number 14. Well, this one blows up into a ball. It puffs up and that's a clue. It is a puffer fish. And our final one. Well, number 15 is not a pretty fish at all. You may never have seen this one before. It's called a blob fish. What a funny name. Well, how did you get on? Did you get lots of those fish? Did you learn 
the names of some new sea creatures. Well, I hope you had fun guessing all those sea creatures. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Great playing everyone, well done.